Now, my part on the program at the very first is just talk to you about equipment. And I know, you know, it's kind of a outdoor setting. It may not be real conducive to it, but if you've got a question, there's no reason. Just hold your hand up and, and we'll address it. Let's do this real informally. And don't hesitate to let me know if, you, if I need to uh, address, a, you know, maybe a concern you have or maybe you didn't understand what I was saying, whatever. And do that with all the speakers if you don't mind. Any questions before we get into the equipment? Okay. Well, we brought everything we could think of and, and really, you know, you can use almost anything for a lot of these control methods. May not be the best, but you know, little old cheap garden type sprayers, yeah, they'll work. These little old pump up garden sprayers, they'll work. The problem that we've got, if you go that route, is putting the right kind of nozzles on that kind of equipment. It's real important to match the nozzle type with the type of application method. And as we go through each of these plants and how you do it, we'll be talking about these different size nozzles. So most of the time, what we're doing, we're going through backpacks if we're gonna be doing it, you know, some of the stem sprays that we'll talk about later. That's not my favorite piece of equipment. Now, I don't really like putting backpacks on me. There's other ways of doing things, and we'll talk about those, but uh, still, that's a cheap, easy, good way to get into doing brush control for mesquite, for prickly pear, and a lot of these species where you don't have to invest a lot of money. There's a lot of different backpacks out there. These are, that's a Solo. Been using those for years. I've been using other kinds too. As a rule of thumb, if you're paying $80 to $100 each for them, you're probably getting a pretty good piece of equipment. You know, you kind of get what you pay for. One of the biggest questions we get is, well, when you go to buy them, there's two kind of pumps. There's a piston pump and a diaphragm pump. This particular one has a piston pump on it. Over the years, this is no uh, uh, hard data to make this uh, opinion, but I've generally had more trouble with the diaphragm pumps. They cost the same amount of money as the pistons. The pistons seem to last longer for me without leaking. The only reason you'd want to go to a diaphragm pump is if you're spraying wettable powders, and you generally won't be doing that. So as a rule, we're generally going to recommend just, just get you the piston pump. If you get the smallest one you can find, too, of these, of these backpacks, they make them in different sizes. Like the Solos, we can get in a four gallon. Don't go and buy the five gallon. You, you don't want that extra weight. You want to keep it small on you. I wish they made a two gallon out there because some of these treatments we use, like for mesquite, we can go in there and a gallon mixed up will last the guy out there 45 minutes or so. So you, there's no need to put five gallons on your back. How are you gonna get your wife to do that anyway? So, you know, you gotta match you know your equipment to what you're going to be doing. Now we do do we do make some modifications to that equipment, and they're they're very small, but they're real important. One is when you get that equipment, it's going to have these two little straps. You know, just take those, throw those away, and get you some of these aftermarket harnesses that go on here. The forestry supply places like that they got online catalogs. You can order these things. Uh, I haven't bought any in a while, but used to, we was paying around 36 bucks for them. And they're real um, nice if you're going to have that equipment on you very long. Essentially what they do, they have that broad belt, goes around your waist, it puts a lot of that weight up on your hips, not where it's just hanging off your shoulders all the time. So that's an important thing. And then, when you buy these things, they're going to come with a, a flat fan nozzle. It'll be a little plastic nozzle, most of them. Take that nozzle off and go put it in a drawer and just leave it there. Because really that nozzle, the only thing it's good for is spraying some weeds under your feet. It does not work for any of the brush type spraying that we're gonna be talking about today. You need to put an aftermarket nozzle on there. What we use, have been using for umpteen years are these cone jets. Okay, spraying systems company makes these. You can get them through Wiley, whatever. They sell them in the plastic. They sell them in the brass. 
Uh, of course, it's going to be a little more expensive, and they have different size holes in them. So this is like an X8. This is an X1. Uh, as we go through here, you'll understand we use an X1 when we're stem spraying. If we're going to go be spraying the leaves, that doesn't work. We need the bigger nozzle. But these nozzles are fairly cheap. One thing that happens is that sometimes people buy sprayers and these threads don't fit. They're just not the same thread size. How you can fix that a lot of the times is just take the crazy nozzle apart, like I'm doing right here with this, with this plastic one. Take that part off, the threaded part, and then take your sprayer, the nozzle that came on it, take it apart, get that part off your original nozzle. Take it and substitute it on this nozzle, okay? And then you have the right threads. Doesn't always work, but most of the time it does. And that's one advantage if you go like with a solo or something like that. Uh, you know, we know that generally those wands they're putting on there, they're gonna match these nozzles that you're gonna be buying. These old backpacks are really resistant to diesel. Uh, we've got them that last several years. You know, they don't last forever. Eventually the seals and things go out on them. But uh, we do run almost straight diesel through them. Uh, just rinse them out when you get through. You know, I'm, I'm going to admit to you, I really don't rinse mine out, okay? But, but they still keep working. But you're supposed to rinse them out every now and then. 